Bhagavan Asta Ishvaraha Iti Bhutani Manasa Kamaistai Sadhu Manayat Hari Sarvesu Bhutesu Bhagavan Asta Ishvaraha Iti Bhutani Manasa Kamaistai Sadhu Manayat Hari Sarvesu Bhutesu Bhagavamasta Ishvaraha Iti Bhutani Manasa Kamaistai Sadhu Manayat Nobody else out there, huh? Okay. They all died. <laughs> Marco, come on. Ladies. Ishvara 
Hari Sarveshu Bhuteshu Hari, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Sarvesu, in all, Bhutesu, living entities. Bhagavan, the Supreme Personality. Aste, is situated. Ishwaraha, the Supreme Controller. Iti, thus, Bhutani. All living entities, manasa, by such understanding, kamai, by desires, tai, those, sarumanayet, one should highly esteem. Translation One should always remember the Supreme Personality of Godhead and his localized part representation as the Paramatma who is situated in the core of every living entity's heart. Thus one should offer respect to every living entity according to that living entity's position or manifestation. Hari Sarveshu Bhuteshu. This statement is sometimes misunderstood by unscrupulous persons who wrongly conclude that because Hari, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, is situated in everyone in every living entity. Every living entity is therefore Hari. Such per foolish persons do not distinguish between the Atma and the Paramatma, who is situated in every body. The Atma is the living entity, and the Parama is Paramatma is the supreme personality of Godhead. The living entity, however, is different from the Paramatma, the Supreme Lord. Therefore, Hari Sarveshu Bhuteshu means that Hari is situated as Paramatma, not as Atma, although Atma is part of Paramatma. Offering respects to all living entity means offering respects to the Paramatma situated in every living entity. One should not misunderstand every living entity to be Paramatma. Sometimes unscrupulous persons designate a living entity as Dharidra Narayan, Swami Narayan, this Narayan, or that Narayan. One should clearly understand that all Narayan is situated in the core of the heart of every living entity. The living entity never becomes Narayan. Om Agyan Timidandasya Gina Jana Salakaya Chaksu Un Militam Yena Tasmai Sri Guruvena Maha Sri Chaitanya Mano Bistam Stapti Tamyena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadam Mayam Dadati Swam Padanti Kam Ma Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prestaya Bhutale Srimakti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Tinamine Namaste Saraswati Teve Gaudavani Pacharine Nirvishesha Sunyavari Pastyatya De Satarine Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Srivasati Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare hmm. Hmm. So there are a class of people that like to not find the proper distinction between the soul and the supreme soul, or consider the soul also, uh, because it's part of the supreme soul, it's also the supreme soul. That's their understanding, or at least their misunderstanding. <coughs> so here it's explained, and we hear how often that there are two souls with every in every living entity's body and that is uh, the supreme soul parma matma and also the individual soul the living entity actually when you actually take this a little bit farther you'll find there are innum innumerable souls in every living entity's body each particular cell actually is an individual soul 
So there's actually millions of souls within one body. <laughs> souls are everywhere. They're innumerable, at least apparently innumerable in the material existence. But the two pre principal souls are the living entity who is the enjoyer of the field. The field refers to the body. And the uh, Paramatma who is the proprietor of the field, the owner. And so these two souls are there. So one who sees actually sees both and the distinction between both. Of course, when we, therefore it says, vidya vinaya sampane, brahmani gavi hastini, suni chaiva svapake cha, pandita samadarshanaha. The samadarshana means one who sees equally. The soul is in the body of different types of bodies. <laughs> and the verse illustrates this by indicating a dog, a dog eater, a brahmin, a cow, like that. And so different types of individuals are indicated just to show that actually everyone is a pure spirit soul. And one should see that, but here this verse also gives you a little indefinite that everyone should be offered respects according to one's position or uh, manifestation. In other words, respects are given accordingly to that soul. And therefore, um, it says that one who, um, I can't remember the different distinctions, but to one who is fully engaged in devotional service, one can offer full obeisances to that person. One who is simply chanting the holy names of the Lord, one can offer respects by simply folding their hands like that. And so, and of course, we see that even the non-devotees, those who in the material world, they were, they're respected because they're part and parcel of Krishna. And therefore, we give them respects according to their position. Although we don't intimately associate them with them, we see that they are also part and parcel and very dear to Krishna. Every soul is very dear to Krishna, even those in lower bodies because Krishna is the Supreme Father, and therefore everyone is seen by him as equally, uh, what we say, he cares for each soul equally according to that soul's situation. So that is his natural and, what we say, innate love for each living entity. But we make distinctions in terms of how to offer respect, but still the principle of respect is given. And that's the principle of happiness, because when you give respects to all others, you actually become happy, or you become satisfied. Because everyone may not be respectable in the terms of how we understand the term in terms of elevation of different positions, but everyone's respectable because they're part and parcel of Krishna. <laughs> so Bhakti Vinod Thakur also, he makes one statement where he says that somehow I live in this world because I give respects to all living entities. <laughs> like that. So that's done in the mind for most living entities and for the Vaishnavas we offer sometimes in respects in terms of uh, offering, you know, dandavats or obeisances. But when we off we're offering respects, it's understood here and it's also mentioned here that we're offering respects to the Supreme Lord who is awful, also situated in the heart. So two souls will be giving offered respects when we offer respects, one to the Supreme Lord and one to the individual soul like that. And that is actually, so offering obeisances or offering respects is actually a very elevated principle of Vaishnav culture. In fact, our culture is called the respect, the culture of respect. <laughs> uh, I listened to one six-day presentation on called the culture of respect by one of one great devotee in our movement, Madhavananda Prabhu, who presented it 
in a very detailed form showing how everything is based on this principle of respect. Because as soon as we lose respect, we lose the mood of devotion. <laughs> and we lose the mood of devotion, then we start seeing things materially or ordinary. And then we may also act in that way. So the principle of activity doesn't necessarily have to meet your consciousness, but the principle of activity should be given because that will help to elevate your consciousness. In other words, the one should know how to give respects accordingly, and that will bring your consciousness to the right understanding. But everyone is given respects because everyone is a living entity. And we see in the material world, this is the big problem. Everyone uh, sees another living entity according to their body, and so they judge accordingly, or according to a person's activities. And therefore, they, they may give respects, or they may not, or they sometimes, if they don't like a person's body, or the whole principle of animal killing is based on enviousness. So that and and that living entity is part and parcel of Krishna has been given Krishna's permission to live in that body for so long and have its what we say God given rights to fulfill its needs. If one interferes with that, one's transgressing the strong laws of the material energy and the laws of God and then therefore one is punishable like that. That's why people's, people, the material world is really quite, uh, what's the word, confused. Nobody knows what to do. <laughs> they don't know what to do, and they don't know why they suffer, because they don't know what to do. <laughs> they think that uh, to gain situations in this world, such as better positions or uh, more and more followers or some position or some material amenities is the success of life. But the success of life is to serve and give respects accordingly. The devotee even serves the non-devotee by respecting them as part and parcel and, and finding opportunities to somehow or other give them Krishna consciousness. Or if we can't give them Krishna consciousness, at least we are polite. When Prabhupada was asked, how can you tell a Vaishnav? He said, he's a perfect gentleman. He gives respects to everyone. Uh, the opposite, when the opposite is there, it causes disharmony in so many different ways. It's just like there was one very senior devotee in our movement, extremely senior in terms of his position and his seniority in the society where he was getting off the plane. You know, when you get the, when the plane lands, you know, you see when they turn the seatbelt sign off and everybody like immediately flies up in the air, jumping, running for their luggage, you know. The reason they do that is they can't wait to get on the ground again because being up in the air is miserable. It's just not natural to be up there. It's just because we're, it's just against our nature. So there's this feeling of, oh, I made it back to the ground. <laughs> so that's, that's almost what we, say, what we say, like reflexive. But a lot of times that causes confusion. And so there was one devotee who was kind of rushing to get out of the plane. And uh, one lady, she noticed that and she said, oh, what would she said? Oh, does your religion teach you to be impolite she said it loud enough to such in such a way that other persons also heard it and this devotee was completely embarrassed and he immediately stopped and was speechless could what could he say you know uh, he didn't try to defend himself because he knew he was wrong <laughs> so yeah therefore even this, the when the non-devotees see devotees acting in the wrong way they also think well what is this but when they see good behavior, they think, oh, these people are nice. These people are friendly. They're respectful, like that. Now, that's preaching. <laughs> that's actually preaching to the non-devotees, like that. So, um, and that's, all of that is based on this principle here of seeing the soul within the heart of all living entities, like that. 
Here it also mentions another, what we say, significant point, is that uh, it's unfortunate, of course, and is that the uh, there are two major deviations with, with people who have some practice of religion or spirituality. And two, the two deviations is that one worships God in order to further their material life. In other words, to get to see God as a supplier and a person who uh, is there to make your life better in this world. And so they offer prayers, they go to church, they give so many, they do so many things. This is very prominent. And the other side is for the Mayavadis and personalists who think that, you know, all living entities are spirit, therefore all living entities are the supreme spirit. And maya is just a covering, and once the covering is removed, then everyone realizes that they're actually God. <laughs> they have, they're, they're half right, in the sense that there is a chintya beta beta tattva, that the living entity is simultaneously one with and different from the Supreme Lord. In one lecture, Prabhupada blew everybody's mind. Prabhupada was pretty good at blowing people's mind. <laughs> and he kept saying, uh, you know, you are God, I am God, we're all God. He kept emphasizing the oneness of the spiritual nature. And of course, later on, he qualified that. But while he was speaking, it would kind of shock some of the devotees. <laughs> and so, but he wanted to make the point of the oneness but our philosophy, which is the complete philosophy, or a complete understanding, is that one is God-like, but not God himself, or has the same qualities in a limited amount of quantity, but never is supreme. And this is an important principle, even devotees don't understand this, a chintya beta beta tattva. Because when you understand that, you can understand things in relationship to everything, even in the material world, too. Um, so that principle is, a, is the foundation for understanding all philosophy. That everything is one with and different from the Supreme Lord. We, the, uh, the uh, Mayavadis emphasize the oneness, the Hasahajyas and other groups, they emphasize the difference. They say God, or maybe even the ordinary religionists, they say we are here and God is in the spiritual world like that. We are in other words, they make a great separation between the living entity and God and see that God really has no business here. He just created this place and now it's up to you to do what you want with it. <laughs> and that, when, what do we do with it? We make a mess out of it. <laughs> so that's, that's unfortunate. So these two, what we say, wrong understandings that the living entity is the supreme or Jai, Sri Panchatattva Ki Jai. Or that the, the Lord is meant to fulfill our material aspirations, our desires, our plans in life, like that. So, but the living, but the devotees have a clear understanding. They understand that, yes, God is situated in my heart and He is directing the wanderings, as Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita. Krishna is not just sitting there, he's witnessing, but he's also directing you accordingly. Just like it mentions in the Bhagavad Gita, when the mind is completely so when the mind is completely controlled, the super soul is already reached. Therefore happiness and distress, honor and dishonor, uh, heat and cold, like gold and iron, appear to be all the same. In other words, the dualities disappear when one is connected with the super soul in the heart. And that super soul is always guiding us. If we can, we should be able to tune in to God in the heart. That way God is always directing you at every second and how you can make advancement or how you should behave in Krishna consciousness. So keeping the mind and senses fully under control in execution of our devotional service and practicing this principle helps us to come in contact with the super soul within the heart. And then when we do that, then the super soul, everything is clear. 
and God is completely can, taking charge of the person's life. And one simply is what we say, under the complete control of the Lord's direction. Now we're struggling with our desires and what God wants from us. So when we stop that struggle, <laughs> then we can also understand that what he wants for us is actually what we want for ourselves. <laughs> it's now non-different. But that takes some time because the mind will always tell you, this is where the problem is, the mind always tells you what you need and why you need it <laughs> and when you need it. <laughs> and when you don't get it, what does it tell you? Well, you should keep trying to get it. And, and if you don't get it, then you should make sure, try to get something else that's better or even equal to that. So... So there's only one there's only one problem in the world and that's your own mind that's all when you understand that there's no problem out there Prahlad Maharaj told that to to his good father Sri Harani Kashipu <laughs> he told them that you know you making friends and enemies but actually you're in, the only enemy is your own mind my dear father and so when one, the mind therefore needs to be directed towards the uh, hearing, transcendental knowledge, engaging in devotional service, and especially chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Krishna Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. If we're at least making the endeavor to chant all the time, either in our minds or openly, then we're always connected with Krishna in devotional service. That's, that's something we have to practice. And when you do that, you'll find it, that, that the holy name guides you automatically in your devotional service. That's why Prabhupada said, chant always. Satatam kirtayantomam. One who's always glorifying the, the Lord is actually situated always on the spiritual platform. And that takes you to the transcendental platform and ultimately to the platform of perfection. Okay, so it's a matter of consciousness. Everything is a matter of consciousness. Reality is a matter of consciousness, but there is a supreme reality which is above all external forms of consciousness, and that is explained in the Bhagavad Gita. So if you haven't reached this reality, you know you haven't reached perfection yet. And then Krishna explains that when you thus know the truth, you know that all living beings are my parts and parcels. They're in me and they're mine. Not only are they in within me, I am within them and they also belong to me. That is, Krishna mentions that verse that follows 434 in Bhagavad Gita. It's 435, the next verse that the perfection of serving the spiritual master culminates in complete transcendental knowledge, which gives transcendental vision. That one can see all living entities on that level. In the meantime, we have to practice that. We can't wait for spiritual life to fall out of the sky and hit you in the head. It's not going to do that. You have to work at it. It's something you have to really, really work at. It's something because the material energy is moving us in the opposite direction, so we have to fight against that material energy by keeping our minds always connected in devotional service. And then we're always in the best situation. And even if you make a mistake, it's easily overcome because you're on the, you're in the right you're in the right mood. Okay, so we'll stop here. Let's see if there's any comments or questions. Question? No? Oh, okay. We have a... Hare Krishna, thank you for your nice lecture. Uh, Simple, yeah. wasn't anything, you know. <laughs> uh, I, I would like only to say that how difficult it is uh, to be respectful uh, for one who, whose behavior is very bad or mm -hmm. so, and 
you may have to respect from a distance, mm -hmm. but that respect should still be there, but you may not associate because it may cause you difficult to be in that association. But if uh, it's devotees and have service together? Well, then you have to be the example. <laughs> if you're the example, then... <clears throat> And you also, that's how you teach. You teach two ways. Teach by your words, but you teach by your example. But as it says, um, example is higher than precept. Because words also are important, but they may not completely come to the standard of what, what we're actually living like. But our example speaks the loudest. Mm -hmm how we behave, or how we interact with others, like that. That's the principle. Thank you. Yeah, so be the example, and that, that inspires others. Okay. You know, Prabhupada, he taught both by, both by both these principles. But he also made a distinction of certain things that he did that we couldn't do. But then we should always follow the etiquette. Because etiquette, as Sanatana Goswami says, is the ornament of a Vaishnava. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we get outside of the etiquette when we do certain things. But we should be careful not to commit any offenses or cause any discomfort to others. If we do, then that will cause, may cause some disharmony in the whole interaction. Sometimes we joke and we tell bad jokes. What can we do? <laughs> so, but sometimes we try to correct the bad joke with another bad joke. <laughs> so it's like that. So sometimes, yeah. So that 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 joking should be should be done also in proper in proper circles. Like that. Like that. Okay. But there is there is good joking and then there's other kinds of joking. <laughs> there's the joking that makes other people feel horrible and there's the joking that makes everybody feel good. <laughs> so you <laughs> have to distinguish between the two. Okay, anything else? Okay. No more? All right, we can stop here. Thank you very much. Srimad Bhagavatam Ki Jai. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. <laughs>